start our normal recording. And I am also going to share my screen and go into our normal slides for the evening. So I'm sure everybody can see my screen, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so besides that great introduction of an evening that we've had there from John and Quinn, welcome everybody to the Global Blockchain, Cryptocurrency and Trading Meetup community. Tonight is hosted by myself, DC and Simon. We ask you not to record as we are already doing so and we will make the recording available. We do have a private Telegram group for anybody that's interested. If you could send your contact details by DM to David Cahill or Simon there in the chat function, and we'll add you to the Telegram group. There's also a meetups form when the meetup is over. If you came through the meetups page, there is a meetups form asking for feedback. We'd appreciate if you could give feedback because it'll help other people find the community and give us an idea if we're going about things the right way. And then finally, tonight is not financial advice. So in our meeting this evening, our code of conduct, we would ask everybody to be aware of others, be friendly and patient, be welcoming and respectful, be open to all questions and viewpoints, be understanding of differences, be kind and considerate to others. So just coming up tonight in the main room, we will be talking about the current market and we may have a breakout room for those newer to crypto that can ask some newer questions. And we have an upcoming meeting on the 18th of June. And on the 18th of June, we're gonna be having a guided chat about the coin of the month. And what we'd like people to do is talk about the coins they selected. So the idea of this is to give the rest of the community information on coins that they don't know about. Now, if you did just happen to just look at the list and pick, you don't have to um, go into any detail about your coin at all, but it will be an open discussion on coin of the month. And we also will have a breakout room if necessary for those that are new to crypto. So that is it. And at the end of the evening, I will be sharing, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. I'm not sharing anymore, is it? My screen. No. Actually, I don't think it was sharing the whole time. I wasn't sharing at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have sharing your screen. <laughs> We're just enjoying the show, Paula. Said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about me. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry, buddy is all here. It's the code of conduct there. Okay. How many have we got in? We have 16 people in and we have quite a lot of new people. Can we get a show of hands of how many people would like to go into a breakout room for newer people? And the alternative is to stay in this room and talk about the current market and speculation. So if we could have a show of hands, there is a way to put up your hand in the reactions. So if you go down to the reactions, Is no, is the reactions coming up on my side now? No, I'm not here either. I can't see it. Let me try. I don't see any. That's okay. Everyone's comfortable with just chatting about the market. So everybody's comfortable chatting about the market and current conditions. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I'm getting thumbs up coming in here now. Okay. Viviana would have liked to go. Ah, now I'm confused. <laughs> I think everybody's comfortable to stay in here, yeah? Yeah, looks good. I don't see any hands this end. Okay, well, Simon and David, I'm going to let you continue lead because I'm not finished that um, the spreadsheet that I want to share, which is the, the leaderboard for this evening. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue doing what I'm doing and let the two of you lead and I'll jump back in on interesting points. So you can go ahead and take over. Sounds good. Cool. Um, I just thought it'd be interesting to get people's views on um, how how they're feeling after the last couple of weeks. Because um, I, know, I know from personal experience, and, and we talked pre-meetup, pre um, just about where we were maybe sitting a couple of months ago and how we were feeling. And then all of a sudden, with some of the FUD that's come out, some of the Elon tweets and things like that, 
Um, has it um, not confidence? Has it? Are you feeling positive about it? So it's just really an open open chat, just to see how people are feeling right now. So who wants to kick off? Oh, Jess. Well, the, the, my strategy has changed. Uh, for a while, it was just kind of holding the top ten and holding it for about a week or two, kind of a month. Now everything's in the period of consolidation, and I find myself now looking through the market, looking for ones kind of on some lower lows in the area of consolidation and trying to find ones that have like random weeks where they run up 50%, 60%. And I'll set up like a 10% buy limit on that. Forget about it, move on, just go through and wait for that to go off, take my profit and cash out. A little bit more tedious. I like the idea when everything was going off, you can hold Cardano, you can hold anything really and it was going up. Didn't matter who you talked to, everyone had a different portfolio, everyone was making gains. Uh, but now it's kind of, rem I'm reminding myself more, I've, I'm in this for 20 years. So then I can kind of get off it for a while, let my stop losses go off or buy them up, and then just set a trade and then turn it off. I, I, I think that's really interesting because you're right. The I think if you think back, it, it was everything, literally everything was up and up and up and up. And you kind of think, oh, this is great. Is it just going to keep going to the moon? And I think in a lot of respects, getting a reality check like that is quite a healthy thing. It didn't feel very nice, don't get me wrong. But it, it's, de it's definitely made me rethink my strategy, some of the tokens that I look at, uh, how I've got my kind of uh, stable coins versus different investments, and whether it's top 10 or not. So it's a really, really good point. Um, yeah, everything's in the USDT for me, right? Not everything. Um, but I, instead of holding Bitcoin or Ethereum, I'm just holding in uh, USDT. It, it's interesting and, what uh, you're saying about the setting a, a purchase order and then having a... So you're doing it for a cash out. So you're doing a 10% profit in cash out, are you? Yeah. So I don't know. I guess like, right. I just set some this morning for uh, REEF. If you guys want to pull up in your phones and just, we can look at one of them right now. Um R E E S paired with Brief, yeah. 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 Used to hold that until it start 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 doing nothing for uh, ages. I just don't uh, but uh, yeah. So uh, was a good that was the one of them. That was one of them. Then there was this other one called Quant Q T U M and H bar. Yeah. So those are the three I have right now. But I'm only doing. I find myself doing maybe three to five trades a week instead of trading more. Yeah. yeah. But nothing's going spot, up. Everything's, everything's going down. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, see, the market, it's like what you were saying earlier, the market is now making everybody walk their butt off for money. Yeah, everyone's got... And, and wonder what, there's a... It's, I'm on Binance. When you go to trade button and you will spot, you could trade ETF. Oh, no, market. Where is it? You can bet on things going down. Yeah, spot trading. Mm. Spot ETF. You can bet on things going down and up. And I got so... One of my strategies was to do that. But people scared me silly. Market was so volatile. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's a way of charting it so that you can get in. Once you know your trend line, your support line, you, mm -hmm. can, you can trade these waves beautifully and do very well in times like this. But again... You're going to learn a new skill. We're all going to have to learn a new skill now. Instead of just riding it up, you know, and just, mm -hmm. as you were saying, everybody making money. Well, now we're going to have to learn how to actually, before you put your money in, have a look at the trend lines, have a look at the support lines, and not be so gung-ho, and be very careful with your capital, and always keep 50% of your capital that you're using the trade on the sidelines. So if it goes back down, you can buy back in, and you're getting these mm -hmm. beautiful entries. The days of just randomly picking a coin and you know mooning that that's over for now it's not to say we won't go back into that but right now i think it's time to be cautious you and think you think that the the bull run is finished for this time uh, david quite possible i mean we could talk about that um the charts say yes the fundamentals say absolutely not so it's a really confusing it's a really confusing space to trade right now one thing I do know from looking at charts is that the dominance has flipped back to Bitcoins. So you probably noticed in the last two days your alts 
are doing miserably. That's because Bitcoin is the dominance is back. So if we put in a higher but hold the, with the, the dominance the, at this point, we are looking but, strong. But on the but other we hand, still, we go down, we're definitely David, in a better Sorry, time. just to add something to that, but we still see a lot of the whales buying Bitcoin on the dips and mm. moving that Bitcoin to cold wallets. We, we still see that movement. So I'm wondering that uh, I don't think that is the, the end. We, that, that's my personal opinion. So I, I think uh, we, we will see bouncing around of between the 48 and coming down to the 30s for a while. And then it's going to scare a little bit everyone down and then it, it, it will bounce back to to the all time I that's my opinion but I, I think that will be maybe on the next on the next uh, six months yeah I mean fundamentally there's no reason to be worried it, it looks it, 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 to me it seems like we're in a, a, a bear I, trend I, within a bull market but having said that the technicals look absolutely abysmal the charts are frightening at the moment <laughs> I have my buy orders for Bitcoin to on the on the 28th so oh, I'd put them in at 20. 20? Personally. Yeah. Because there's, there's I absolutely zero. my buy zero. orders at 28. I had some in there as well. And I removed them. And I removed them because I wanted to use the liquidity in a pool to earn something else. And I knew I was going to be waiting a while for the bottom to be found. Or I felt I was going to be waiting a while for the bottom to be found. And, and why, why 20, David? Because the only resistance between 30 and 20 is that miserable bit of volume at 28. So if we, if we lose 28, I can't find any more decent support on the chart whatsoever. And you think that he, because if he's going to 20, he's going to touch the last... Uh, exactly. The That's a huge psychological level. And we didn't spend much time down there. We ripped through it with gusto. So... We're definitely uh, on makes sense, here, so makes I mean, sense, makes sense. That, that, that's a very good point. I'll give you a quick look at what I'm looking at. Just going to share a screen for a minute, guys. That's a very good point because I, I, I forgot to. Are we screen? Can you see my screen there? Zoom, the see. Zoom window. The Zoom window, yeah. yeah. Grand. There you go. Right, uh, just get rid of these ads here. You see this 20,000 mark down here? Look at how quick we ripped through that. We busted through that. So, and another very scary thing, actually, while the chart's open, this here is what they call a descending triangle. Let's have a look at this for a minute. Descending triangles. A downtrend, the market must be in a downtrend before the descending triangle pattern appears. It's important to emphasize that traders should not simply try to pattern whenever it appears. In other words, in a bull market, this wouldn't be relevant. We are in a downtrend now. We've had a series of lower lows, lower highs for the most part. So in a consolidation period, yeah, we're consolidating. As you said, Marco, the whales are scooping it up. We're definitely consolidating, even though the price, all this good news and the price not going up. So they're going to buy that while it's low. Absolutely. In fact, some will believe that they're manipulating it, but that's another story. So we've got all of this criteria here that meets this. So how would you try that? Well, you'd extrapolate this pole here from the highest part of the candle and the lowest when we entered that trend. So let's indulge. Goddamn chart. Very well. <laughs> I'm sorry. useless with this as well. <laughs> Okay, there's our line there, roughly, right? I'm on a small screen here, so it's a, it's a bit tricky. I'm used to me big screen. Anyway, I'll press on. Extrapolate that. Where does it put us? Uh-oh. You know? This is what I'm looking at. I'm looking in between here, between 30 and 20. And uh, there's not a hell of a lot of support. We just came through there, so we think we'd be going back there soon. Now, I hope. That's not the case, and that does not mean that this is definitely going to happen. People don't have worried, you but... have you read the uh, seen the videos from Garrett Soloway? Uh, the guy is, is a normally is a very good guy on the stocks market, and he's he's, he's shooting up some videos. And he's one of the guys that is saying that he's going to 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 bottom on the twenties, but he's saying that he have a big chances to go to the forty eight before he, he reached the twenty. 
well, let's see where and a breakout to the upside would put us. That's interesting. Around about 48,000 bucks. Yeah, you know, but because we're in a bear trend, the trends are fancy and the probability says that it's going down. That's only technically. I mean, you have to take into consideration that there's countries now adopting Bitcoin. There's also counterfeit to that. So, I mean, it's anyone's guess. It's quite scary, to be honest. It's hard to trade. I wouldn't be putting everything in, you know, at the moment. I definitely wouldn't be. I'd be very, very cautious. And uh, keep your money for that dip. If, if we do get that dip, then you're in a great place. Buy back in at 20 grand. Wow, that'd be amazing. So, now just be cautious, be careful. I mean, the technicals are saying one thing, fundamentals are saying another. So this is, at this stage, it's like roulette. I'm staying out. I'm going to wait. I'm not going back in until we break 40 grand cleanly. That's just me personally. Uh, I still have 50% on Bitcoin, 20% uh, on uh, Ethereum, and the remaining on USDT. But maybe I'm going to set some sell orders around of the 40s. If we, uh, if we look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, you'll see that about two or three days ago, it flipped. This is the first time it's flipped in a while. Now, if we had a higher high and a breakout with that, things could reverse very quickly on I mean, All you have to do is hit that 48 point. Everyone's going to fall more in. You'll be at 60 grand before you know it, 70 grand before you know it, you know? Yeah. So it's you, you know what it's like. Bitcoin is crazy. It's, uh, it just does. The, everybody at the moment, by the way, there's an interesting stats. The highest ever amount of shorts, short, shorts, the second highest amount of shorts is currently in play at the moment. So well, normally when everyone's expecting something, it goes the other way. So we could absolutely smash out of that triangle and burst up to 48 by sometime next week. But again, we're, we're already about halfway down the apex. And these things normally don't go more than these breakouts normally happen at the most three quarters of the way. So let's say yeah, we're doing the, a breakout, the breakout a week. You know? Sorry, David, again, the breakout can happen and then he comes down to retest and he, he, he doesn't totally he goes down. He oh, you have to wait go for the, to the 48. He does, he does a breakout to the 48 and then he comes down, he doesn't, he tests the resistance. Yeah, the, you the have support to wait for the break. You have down. to wait for the retest. If you don't wait for the retest, you will get wrecked because this is nothing but a series of fake outs and shake outs at the moment. So, it would be very prudent to wait for retest in all situations, absolutely. And um, yeah, I don't know. You'd wait for your retest and then cautiously approach a long position. I wouldn't go near uh, margin trading at the moment. I'd, I'd spot trade this until we're in back in a bull trend. I don't. Uh, I, I, I'm. I, I never did <laughs> uh, <coughs> margin trading, so I'm okay with that. You're a wise man. Yeah, I think a lot, a lot of people got, well, a lot of people got wrecked, didn't they? I know it's, uh, it, it's quite a few painful lessons. But then, I, I guess the big thing is when you are doing leverage trading and stuff, is um, make sure you're doing it within your means and make sure that that money is money you've prepared to lose, and also set stop losses and stuff. And I, I mean, I've been as guilty of of that of thinking, oh, it's, it's definitely at a stage where it's keeping going up. Won't set a stop loss just in case there's a little dip below it. Next thing I know, massive candle down, dips, um, wrecked me. So it's, it's, it's easily done, even if you're experienced in doing it. Um, just, just interesting with, with some of the other people in the groups, any, anyone else got any thoughts on, um, on the markets or anyone want to chip in with um, kind of where, where they feel things are going or, or what experience they've had? It would actually be really interesting to hear if anybody has new enough to the game that they have actually not bought in yet and they're waiting to see what happens? Or is everybody holding something, whether it be Tether or some other coin or token? Everybody holding. I, I think if the people if for the long are here for the long term, there is no worry because it can take time but the, the, the market will bounce back. So I, I strongly advise if anyone bought Bitcoin at 60,000, now is down on, on the 30, when the 30 is done, if you can hold that for, for some time, hold it because it's going to 
bounce back for sure. Yeah, I think the worst mistake is to, I mean, you only take a loss when you realize that loss and you sell your coins. You're not in a loss until you actually sell those coins. So if you can hold them for long enough and hold them throughout this, the only thing is nobody can really tell you how long this is going to last for. My personal feeling is that it's a bear trend within a bull market, that the technicals and the charts and all that David showed us and ones that I've looked at myself are all bearish at the moment. All the trends, there's nothing to say that there's bullish momentum going on behind the scenes. But off chart indicators, like on chain indicators, some of them are showing bullish momentum, like the whales actually buying up. And then all the news and all the adoption, so the technicals are all really, really strong. So the projects are still the projects. If you mm. invested in good projects, they're still good projects. There's just market conditions at the moment. And, and if you have a project that you believe, you have some of them a very good price, and maybe they will even be a better price in, in a couple of weeks because they, you know, they, they move much, much bigger than the movement with, with the, that project is much bigger than the Bitcoin for down and for up. So uh, if, if you've seen some, identify some project that you, 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 you work in to get in, I'm, I'm, I have some on my eyes that I'm waiting for the right moment. If I think the price reached certain level, I will jump in on that. But oh, not yeah. that uh, exotic things. Now we leave that exotic investments for for the bull market. That's, that's an interesting one, Marco, because I've I've used some of the downwards um, prices to rebalance the portfolio I've got. So where some coins have gone down more than others, and they're projects that I wasn't necessarily as bought into. I've been using that um, kind of moving things around depending on the percentage loss they've had and how bought into them I am. So I can consolidate the portfolio to stuff that I'm, I'm really solid and confident with and feel with the fundamentals. They are things that are going to go up. Um, and I suppose the other thing with it is it, depending on where you bought it, it has got an added benefit if you're above capital gains tax levels as well, because you can kind of offset that loss, but put it in something else that you know is going to, going to go up and compensate for that so it's, i guess with your strategies it's just really thinking it's not making the emotional decisions it's really thinking about what am i doing why am i doing it maybe make a bit of research maybe look at some of the projects you've got and, and how invested into them you are um, thank you Ruby. thank you i'll get it after <laughs> um just one other thing i thought i'd mentioned uh conscious of time um i i had an experience in in the week where i thought i'll buy some uh tokens and i wanted to stake them on celsius which um you you can put tokens on celsius and earn a uh, interest on them and the token that i was after moving was a token called synthetics um and they give you a rate on celsius of just under 14 percent so your coin will build up by about 14% and you get that paid every week. Um, so I thought, oh, you can't, well, you can buy it, but it's expensive doing it in the Celsius app. So I thought, I'll buy it on Binance, transfer it across. It's really interesting because when I looked on Binance, the, the fee they had for transferring this token off was incredibly high. So these tokens are about, I think they're about $10, $10 each. They were charging 3.8 tokens to make a withdrawal to another wallet. So that's nearly $40 just to take my coins off of there, um, which, which is incredibly high. Now, I did a bit of Googling and found, uh, which I'll put in the chat, I found a page called um, withdrawalfees.com. Um, and what it gives you is if you are looking to do this and either stake things, put them in a different wallet, move them into cold storage or, or whatever wallet you might want to do, um, this actually gives you a breakdown of all the different exchanges for your tokens, where you can withdraw them, um, what the fees are for withdrawing them. And believe it or not, with this synthetics token, it was cheaper for me to sell it back to USDT transfer the USDT to another exchange, I think it was Huobi or, or something, um, because the fee for that was like on the Tron network was $1, buy it back and then withdraw it from the Huobi network. So, so all of that worked out 
at a cost of 0.9 synthetics tokens as opposed to if I just transferred it straight off Binance for almost four synthetics tokens. And it really made me think about how often we, we would just do something like that and not really think of it and take the hit. So I've, I've stuck the link in there, but hopefully that will be useful for people. But um, it's also made me think about if I am buying something to do that with, which exchange I'm actually going to use to do that. I, I was having that uh, problem. Thank you for that link uh, this week uh, with uh, with uh, Matic. You remember that I post because I was trying to buy from Euros and I realized that Coinbase Pro, it's the best way for you to to charge, uh, to, to, to transfer uh, Euros or US dollars. And then from there, you convert on crypto uh, because it, it was incredibly high on, on the other places. I was paying way much on, on, on that uh, movement and another thing interesting about uh, celsius is uh, they run promotions all the time uh basically i i some weeks ago i ch i i remove all the money from there and i transfer on nexus and uh, now they they have another promotion that they, they give you 50 dollars so basically i move it <laughs> i move it back my my matic there it, they pay 13 percent or 14 percent and I get fifty dollars for free, so uh, it's really interesting. And they pay the fees; they cover the fees to to remove to to transfer out the the money from from Celsius. So it's really interesting. If anyone want to use that, it's free money that uh, that they are giving. The, Just a quick the, question to both of you there, Simon and Marco: Is Celsius Matic is alert to on ETH? Is that correct? Hmm. Yeah, from and what Celsius, I'm, uh, is that there. a layer one or a layer two? Layer two. Uh, no, what? Uh, Celsius or, or Matic? No, Celsius. Celsius is, I don't know, it's layer one, I think. I, I, I tell you why, I've had similar problems as well. Um, and I've wanted to get a stable coin onto Matic that I have in um, some exchange somewhere. I can't even remember the name, but okay. <laughs> And I have absolutely no way of getting it from where it is onto the Matic chain. And the looking at my options, my options were probably to move it from the exchange it's in over to Binance, from Binance to the Binance Smart Chain, and then from the Binance Smart Chain, use a bridge onto Matic. Ooh. Is that the only hope? <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. It know, seems very convoluted, all right. Um, like, how can you get stable coin onto Matic? So if you're on Binance, okay, and you go and do a withdrawal, you can only do a Binance Smart Chain token withdrawal or an ERC-20 withdrawal. Right. Well, um, yeah, well, you can. I mean, the, they, if you're withdrawing it, depending where you're putting it, and it tends to be for other exchanges, you could do it over the Tron network, which is really cheap. That's about a dollar to transfer... Um, transfer your stable coins, um, providing they will receive receive Tron tokens. Um, but yeah, I don't really know because the, there are certain tokens that are on the Matic network that they can use. And I, I've done the MetaMask, the swap around on MetaMask. Not all the tokens seem to be supported on there, but they've got uh, they have got stable coins on there, and it will bridge it within uh, MetaMask. On the Matic site, so it will swap it from uh, ERC twenty onto the Matic or Polygon chain. Oh, so once I have it, then as an ERC twenty token on the ETH blockchain, it'll do it. So I it, need to get it onto the yeah. ETH blockchain. Um, yeah, I mean, in effect. But, uh, but bear in mind with the conversions. The other day, I, I tried to make a conversion of a very small thing that I had. There, I think it was three, the value of three dollars or something like that. That was on the eat, and I tried to convert, and they were charging me 48 dollars to convert three, <laughs> three, three dollars value. So, bear in mind if you do a conversion on, on, on the on the eat network, uh, how much it costs to, to do that, uh, that conversion. Just... So this is kind of the first year where we've had, um, layer ones and layer twos now that are that are working products as such and we're trying to get them all to talk to each other 
and send tokens back and forth to each other. And it's, it's never been done before this this year, really, that these blockchains start to talk to each other in any sort of way. And it's still for the newer people that are here, it's it's a learning experience for all of us because this is just all brand new that now these different blockchains where previously, if you bought a coin that was on the Ether blockchain, it had to stay there. It was an ERC20 contract. You couldn't do, put it anywhere else. But now with all these other solutions, like with Matic and with Cardano and with Solana and with um, Polkadot, all these other solutions, these coins should be interchangeable eventually. And we should be able to just move one from the other and somehow the system behind it to just know what we want to do. Like the current financial system, really, we don't care how it works, just get it there. <laughs> I, think, I think there is a project that uh, it went live, I think, this month. I don't remember the name. They they will connect all the blockchains in terms of transfers. It's a very interesting project that I've seen uh, advertised. In fact, I, I need to recall that project because I was with an eye on that project. And it's interesting because it, it, it brings all the net, all the blockchains together in that terms are these the parachains built on um how I, don't remember exactly. yeah, I think it, i think it was on the on the on the on the dot field but i don't remember exactly the name of the project it was That's one what of polka the dot is all about so the whole polka dot system has the web tree foundation and what they're all about is building parachains so polka dot isn't just a blockchain it's a blockchain and parachains and the idea of these parachains is that they will make every single blockchain be able to talk to polka dot and polka dot be the central and then there's parachains outside connecting to all the other blockchains yeah but there was a project exactly dedicated to that i don't remember exactly the name because in the last oh, weeks oh, i've been really on the dot busy. network is it marco I think it was on the Death Network. I'm oh, trying to refresh Kusama, my page. Kusama, is that you're talking about? No, no, it was not Kusama. It was one of these new projects that went live these, these last month. And then the, the IDO was uh, was in May, I think. There's some amount of them. There's an absolute... Is that that internet computer protocol? No, it's not that one. Okay. For sure. <laughs> Let me see yeah. coin, coinmarket.com. And I'm going to check the... So just another quick question while Marco's checking that for the whole community there. Um, we're going to start organizing speakers and more talks coming up over the next few weeks and stuff. But if there's any topics that you would be keen for us to talk about, please do drop them in the comments section now. Now, what we don't like to do is coin shilling. Um, however, <laughs> as a community, if we find something interesting, and that's why we're going to have coin of the month discussion next week, that we do share with each other, but we don't do coin shilling. We don't let people on just to shill coins, especially uh, moonage coins and shit coins. Um, but um, yeah, if there is any specific topics that people would like to, us to cover, please do drop them into the chat section and I'll pick up on them and we can organize some of the chats around them. Do you find that, Marco? No, because since I moved to Brave, Brave is a little bit weird with some kind of things and this this is one of the things i have one extension that uh, sometimes i need to refresh that extension the extension and it doesn't work properly is it phantom we were asked by ashkin the Jack? no it was not phantom in, in fact i have a very interesting scene i, I i'm following a moto gp and i noticed that phantom the the blockchain project he started to advertise one of the biggest uh, uh, moto gp teams there the one where Valentino Rossi is racing, they are one of the sponsors. I, I, I thought that is really interesting because for a project to become, to sponsor a MotoGP team is something that, uh, that is expensive to do it. So uh, I noticed that, I, I was surprised to see the, the name there on, on the wall. Okay, it's undervalued. It's undervalued and has its own chain. That's Phantom, is it? Do you want to tell us, Ashka, can you come on mic at all there? Do you want to tell us what Phantom is? I, I cannot find. If I find it, I will let you know, okay? I don't think Ashka can come on mic. 
Okay, well, look, it is eight o'clock now. We are not nearly out of time. Before we finish up for the evening, is there anybody there that has any questions or anything they're stuck on at the moment that they'd like a little bit of help with? No, okay, well, think about it for a moment. And I am going to share my screen and hopefully this time it will share. You got your chart done? I have. There we go, we got you. We Can got you see you. my screen? Yeah, yeah good yeah. stuff. Is Jay with us? No, Jay is busy tonight. He said he could. Jay is like... busy tonight. Well, at the moment on our coin of the month leaderboard, Jay is leading with an average of a 12% increase in the coin. Oh, uh, I have twice my name with the same with the same uh, wow, coin. You, do. you okay. need to remove because I did two entries to test something and I, I highlighted that on that day, but then I forgot completely. That's okay. Sorry I should have spotted that and I didn't. So I need to delete one of them. That's no problem at all. Um, that is because I'm almost on the end of the list. So <laughs> <laughs> Carlos only submitted in one coin and Sunday Young also only submitted in one coin. So if I don't get them, um, we will give them some sort of handicap for this second coin because it wouldn't be fair for it to be zero across the board. We might give them an average across the board. But it's interesting on some of the stuff that some people did pick. We have um, Digibyte. Uh, I'm panicking now because I'm still talking about 91%. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, Alfonso, you also only gave one coin. Um, uh, no, but no, I have both up. You know, if you go up, you will see my two coins. Coin one and two. You can oh, raise the here. line. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, erase, you can line line seventeen. You can raise the line. Yeah, I that's only okay. Keep yeah, seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll get rid of that one too. Okay, that's no problem. I have to get rid of this. Does anybody yeah. put in Kusama? No, they would have done well. I got no. rid of this. Or uh, what else pumped when Bitcoin dipped? Tata and T Fuel. Anyone? No. Nobody had them at no. all. David was oh. David was very clever with his picks there. Sorry, that's just <laughs> rolled off. Um, he David takes a risk picked... to win the competition with zero. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, because David's co host, if he does win, prizes aren't going to be allocated to him. <laughs> Sorry to tell you, David. Well, that's why I had a bit um, of fun with it. But look, this is going on until the end of the month. Okay, this leaderboard is going to change considerably over the next couple of weeks. It is all just a little bit of fun. Um, Kiernan isn't doing too bad in there, which I was surprised to see earlier on. He's quite up the top there with only minus 10%. Mm -hmm. Alfonso only minus 10% as well. Aaron only minus 9%. So, and Carlos and Sunday, we can't really kind of count at the moment because we've only got one coin. So it's not looking, you know, it's not looking great um, with the minuses. But... Uh, Will we win this year? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I think the biggest, the biggest um, down one is Digibyte at the moment is the substantial... Ouch. Coin that's down and chain yeah. link then after that. Um oh well ICP internet computer is down substantially as well. And quite a few of us had that. There was an overlap of coins as well, which is good to see that you know there are popular coins and the people do know what projects are good projects. And then obviously there's some like safe moons in there, um, which is okay too. Shiba coin is in there too. So yeah, loads of fun. Oh, John B, I only have one coin for you as well. Can you drop me another coin, please, when you get a chance? I will, yes. I will send it to you in the chat. Thank you. The, no cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I have it right here, but we're going to dock you. Rate. We're going to we're going to dock you if you pick a coin now. We're, yeah, yeah we, right. Can't oh, right. cheat. I'll make sure he doesn't cheat. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no coin market cop cheating. <laughs> Okay, so that's it then. That's that's the leaderboard for this week. So Jay is at the top of the leaderboard and David is second in the leaderboard. So I'll <laughs> update that again for next week. <laughs> it's all a bit of good fun. So it is. 
So I think that's I, I remember that to... someone someone mentioned about the that the, there was a, a choose of the US uh, stable coins and I told maybe the person is going to win <laughs> on this market because <laughs> you will you will be in zero and the other ones will be in minus. <laughs> Yeah, it was a smart move. All right. Yeah, well done, David, so far. But you're not in the lead anyway. Jay's winning. You wait until uh, Jay finds out he's winning. You. Wait, that, ex that extrapolated uh, drop happens. <laughs> These are all ill. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> right then, everybody. Until next week, we will see you all later. Peace out, everybody. You guys. See you later. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Have a lovely weekend. You too. Bye-bye.